Hey up YouTube. Test ride Tuesday with a difference. Uh, it's Wednesday. Anyway, <laughs> it's been a while. But um, taking this little beastie out today, Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE. Uh, not had it too long, uh, but first impressions are really good. Not going to go into specs and all the rest of that bump because there's been tons of reviews already. Um, it's basically a test ride for myself to see if I like it, see my first impressions, so I thought I'd do a little video as well. Um, really nice in the white and green, that would be my choice if I bought one. Um, not much else to say at standstill, we get on and ride it, eh? Some of you might be able to guess where I am from that thing there. Desert Rats Memorial. There is one thing that uh, I'll point out before we start. Um, I'm currently testing out um, a voice recording kit. Yeah, testing out a voice recording kit, which um, I've linked in through an app on my phone called Parrot to my Interphone Tour intercom. So it might work. It might sound like utter shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll have to see how I get on. It's another experiment. I do loads of these. And wait weeks and weeks and months and months and then do another video. Um, I've swapped my helmet since last time. I'm now on a Shoeberth E1. Might do a review on that at some point. Uh, anyway, back to this bike, this Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE. Uh, I owned, as some of you might know, uh, an original Scrambler, or certainly one of the original 865 Scramblers back from when it came out in late 2000s, and mine was a 2013 model. Absolutely loved it. This is obviously a completely different beast. Uh, based on the, the Triumph 1200 twin cylinder engine. It's got bags and bags more power, bags and bags more torque. Things that, um, first impressions wise, I like and I don't like, I suppose. It's not gonna be a long video, certainly not a review. I ain't got time to do a review. I haven't got a bike long enough, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, What don't I like? There's not a lot, if I'm honest. It depends on the kind of riding you're going to plan on doing with it, I think. A lot of my riding now is, when I do ride, is longer distance and camping trips. So I need something with a lot of luggage carrying capacity and for all my camping gear and stuff like that. Um, this is not a really a bike set up for that. You could do it with a more minimalist approach, I suppose. Roll bags on the back. Um, they do do a nice side pannier. Uh, one of the, the material kind, it's got a, um, a proper pannier rack, but then uh, the, the pannier itself is material, but it does suit the bike, but it's only one side because of the higher level pipe. Um, so for me, personally, that is that is a downside to the bike for my kind of riding. If I was buying a bike to blat around on, absolutely, absolutely. It's, uh, it's superb. Um, the other thing, obviously, no screen. I'm used to the Explorer with a with a bloody barn door in the front of me. So that was a culture shock, a sort of shock to the system. Getting on a bike again with no fairing in front of me. I'd probably have a fly screen put on it, one of the little tinted ones, just to take a bit off. And plus the fact it'll keep all the bugs off the clocks. Speaking of which, the clocks. I quite like it. I didn't. I didn't at first. I thought, well, this kind of bike needs some nice analog clocks, but it's actually really good. Um, quite intuitive to use. Uh, lots and lots of different modes, obviously. Um, oh, bums. Yeah, lots and lots of modes. Um, so you can personalise the bike setup. You can personalise the clock setup and all the rest of it. 
Um, and I quite like it. And they're going to add this TFT Bluetooth connectivity, I think, uh, later in the year. So you can, you can control things like a GoPro or music on your phone and intercom via the control switches on the bike. As I said, I'm not going to go into all the, the gump about it, what it's got and what it's not got. There's plenty of proper reviews out there. It, this is just purely a first impressions for, for me. Power-wise, the bike's got bloody tons of it. Any pick a gear, any gear, and it'll roll on. I've dropped it right down to sort of below 40. I'll just do a little roll off here. I mean, six gear. Top gear, I'm doing 38, 39, and it just picks up. And that, for a standard exhaust, um, the exhaust note is is pretty damn glorious. If I'm honest, I can't understand why anybody, apart from the looks, maybe, why anybody would want to spend 700 quid on an RO can for this, because uh, it sounds all right as it is. <laughs> Another tick in the box, Triumph, well done. Uh, Handling-wise, it feels really light and chuckable, especially after my Tiger Explorer, which is a big old beast, as we all know. Uh, I've just done a couple of little really slow speed first gear U-turns, like turning the road kind of thing, and it, it felt really, really well balanced. Really light, almost like there's nothing there, which, which again, compared to my bike, it, there isn't. Uh, it is quite a tall machine. If you're a bit short in leg, you might be better off going for the XC. I think they do a low seat for this, but but for me, six foot one, it feels feels perfect. Um, I was just saying to Tony at Lings before, or a couple of years back, when I, not long after I got the Explorer, actually, I was tempted to chop it back in again for one of the original Scramblers, and I got on it, and it felt absolutely tiny compar compared to mine, and, and it which again is a bit of an obvious statement to make, I suppose, but um, I just couldn't get on with it. And I think I'd feel the same about the street triple that's out. I've looked at them in the shop. Cracking engine, just very, very low. For me, I think it'd be too small, uh, but this feels perfect. Uh, I don't know what's going on up here. I'm not going to overtake up here because you all know it'll wheelie and you all know it's got good power and you've all seen the videos of proper reviewers blatting around on it um, and plus the fact <laughs> I don't want to chuck it down the road and pay the excess I don't want to chuck it down the road anyway um, what else? brakes, very good uh, Twin discs up front, obviously, with the radial calipers. Single disc at the rear, but um, both very good. Lots of feel. Uh, and, and, and obviously, less motorbike than my own to stop. Um, it, it, it doesn't feel, the, the front, it, they've got lots of power, but they don't feel like they're scary on off the instant you pull the, the lever. There is some good feel there. Um, comfort. The seat, I suppose this ride's not long enough really to assess comfort properly, but the seat feels fine. It's nice and wide, which is handy when you've got a fat arse like me. Um, one thing I've been impressed it does have is cruise control. Uh, not as Gucci as the Explorer or Tiger 800, but it's got a cruise control button down here. There. Um, so you can set it at whatever speed you're doing, and, that, and and it will do that, so it'll stay at that speed. So effectively, it's a simple cruise button to hold you at whatever speed. It won't adjust it once you're in cruise. You'll have to roll off and, or press a brake lever or something. Um, alternatively, I suppose you could say cruise control. <laughs> Use your hand. Um, but I have found that on mine, I, I really like uh, having a cruise control button now. Not because I use it all the time, just on those long journeys on the motorway, it's nice to have. I'm going to turn off here and go down through the forest. 
yeah, it's just nice to have, just to give you your right hand a little rest. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, third gear. Hello. Um, another good thing, this clutch is probably the lightest clutch I've ever used on any motorbike ever in the world, ever. Um, really nice and light. Throttle action, really nice and light. It's ride by wire, it's as it should be. I think I mentioned on that Tiger 800 walk around video I did last time, about 10 months ago, that the throttle on that feels quite heavy. And, and again, I was surprised at that because it is ride by wire. But it just felt a little bit heavy. And I think I've seen somebody else mention it on another video as well. Um, there you go. That's it, really. <laughs> Short and sweet, isn't it? Um, I will try and put some more videos up again at some point. I just, I've had that can't be arsed feeling for a bit. Uh, we moved house, got in the way. And then over winter, I didn't ride my bike at all over winter for one reason or another. So I had some withdrawal symptoms for not riding a bike. Uh, But we're back. <laughs> and yes, I've still got the Explorer. Yes, I'm still considering the Tiger 800. In fact, I went into links today uh, to talk about chopping mine in for a Tiger 800 XCA. Um, and whilst I was there, James, ever the sales person, salesman, said, have you thought about a scrambler? Well, yeah, I have, James, because I really like him. <laughs> I think, as I've said, for what I want at the minute, this is not quite me at the minute. If I could afford two bikes, yes, in a heartbeat. If I wanted something just to plat around on, in the twisties, around town, yes, in a heartbeat, I'd have, I'd have one of these, it's superb. Um, and, uh, we've all seen the, the videos where they go off-road and stuff, so if you fancy it, stick some engine bars on, stick some knobbly tyres on and go and do some green lanes. Uh, not sure I'd want to chuck 14 plus grand's worth of bike once I've put all the bits, the extra bits on, um, down some green lanes. But, but you know, the, see the videos, it'll do it. So for that stuff, perfect. It's brilliant. Absolutely love it. Yes, I'd have one. Long trips and camping, no screen, no big panniers on the back. Mm. You could do it, but personally speaking, it's not it's not the right bike for me at the minute for that purpose. Anyway, I'll probably wrap this up in a minute because otherwise I just end up waffling about rubbish. Um, as I said, we've all seen the proper review videos with all the specs. You know all the specs by now. It's been out a little while. Um, a lot of you might have already bought one. You lucky little monkeys. That clutch is just bloody lovely. It's like, it's feather light, it really is. Sounds nice. Um, just while we're here, yeah, I've got both feet flat on the deck there. Only just, but they are flat on the deck. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, aye, standing up. I forgot about that. This is my road for standing up. Um, well, it feels all right. I suppose the tank's not intrusive because it's a little bit narrower. Um, what is intrusive is the high level pipe on the right hand side. There's no getting around that, it does push your leg out a little bit. Um, it's alright if you bandy leg, I suppose. But it does push your right leg out a little bit. It feels like you're 
you're sort of really making a conscious effort to keep your foot on that peg, which I'm not sure I'd want that on a... But then, uh, realistically, how often were you going to be standing up on these things? I mean, it, these off-road gods might be, but I'm not one of them. Most of my riding's on the road, still is on the road. The odd gravel track, potentially. Don't even do that on the Explorer, if I'm if I'm honest. Except when, except when I have to. Um, so there you go. It's um, a little test ride Tuesday, but on a Wednesday. Suck it up, cupcake. Uh, Triumph Scrambler 1200XC. It's uh, it's a Bobby Dazzler, really is. There's not a lot to criticise, really. If you're interested in one, get yourself down to your local Triumph dealer. If you're in Norfolk, or even if you're not in Norfolk, I can highly recommend Ling's Norfolk Triumph in Watton. It's on the high street, Watton. Give James or Tony a, a bell. I'll drop in and see him. Good lads, he usually get a brew on and um, get one out for a test ride. It's worth it. Great. Until next time, ride safe. I'll see thee.